I have been having just a ton of fun making uh, several different styles of crossbody bags and some little wristlets. And um, I thought I would share with you today a couple ideas that I've had. I'm, I'm making another one. Um, they look like this when they're finished. I'll try to hold this back away from the camera far enough. I still have to make the crossbody strap for this one. So I've got my hooks on here just so I won't lose them. But um, it's a good size little bag. It's got a pocket on the front, uh, a little slip pocket on the front, and um, there's one on the inside in the lining and top zipper, um, and one, a little pocket in here. Um, and it, it's just lots of fun to make, and it's really easy. And uh, I have really enjoyed working with cork. Um, I haven't worked with it before, but um, it's it's wonderful. It's lots easier than you think. Uh, so uh, anyway, I have this next bag cut out, and I've just got the pieces laying here together. They're not sewn up, and I'm making a decision here on thread color that I want to use. Um, this is also cork. Uh, this came from Portugal, and it is actually a floral printed cork. And cork has kind of a fabric-y back on it. And on the back of all the pieces to the bag, um, I have fused on some SF-101. This is very light, but it's on the back of everything. Um, this is the back center panel of the bag and I have already fused it on here. And uh, I had an old pair of jeans, which I uh, used and whacked up, and um, I have decided to put that with, that denim with um, this cork. So I've got my zipper picked out and the zipper pull and, um, the one thing I decided after I got this cut out, the one thing I decided that I was gonna do was to put a, a little floral embroidery here in the middle of this center front panel. So I went online and I purchased a design and it's just a quilting design, but it'll work great. Um, and it'll look pretty neat when it's finished, I think. Um, but uh, I had to reduce it. This is 100% and it's too big. And this is down to 90% and this is just right. And so I have uh, printed this off at actual size so that I can sort of audition it on the front here. I've folded it in half both ways so that I can find the center, and then I'll find the center of my uh, bag front piece. And I think this is the color of thread I'm gonna use, just to uh, kind of pull, it, pull things together. And um, I wanted to show you how you, a couple of different ways actually, of how you can uh, determine what fits and what doesn't on a piece of fabric that you have already cut for an embroidery design. Lots of times you, we, I could have put the whole pant leg to these jeans in the, um, lots of times you can do this, put the whole pant leg um, in the hoop and then did my embroidery and then laid this pattern on top of it and cut it out. But this time I didn't decide to put the embroidery on here until after I had already fused the interfacing on the back and I've already cut this out. So um, I'm gonna take you over to my computer and we're gonna take a look at my software and I'm gonna show you how I did this. So here we are. Um, I'm just using a laptop 
and I have in brilliance. I know a lot of people have the Bernina V8 or um, you might have Art Link um, or you maybe you have Hatch or Embird, some other kind of software. There's many different kinds of software. Um, but I chose early on to use in brilliance and I have never regretted it. I love it. It, it does everything I need it to do. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, find my design. So I'm going to go over here and click on open a new design. <clears throat> so we're going to do that. Um, and I'm looking at my USB drive right here. Um, I hope you can see my mouse moving around. Um, I'll, I'll try to point at things a little bit with that. Um, but anyway, here I'm looking at my USB drive. I already purchased the design. I've already downloaded it. And we have that in the file section um, in a, another video. You can see how to do that if you need to. Um, and so I have already dropped this design down onto my USB stick. So I've got it stored there. So I'm going to have a look and I know it is HDF Q3C. I know that's a crazy name. And so later on I'll go in and I'll rename this something so that I can remember it. But for now I'll select it. And there's the preview that shows up. So I know I've got the right design. So now I'm going to ask my software to go ahead and open it. Now this is 100%. And in Embrilliance software, if you want to, you can print off a design. And it'll print off at exactly the size that it will stitch out. And it'll print off with some registration marks down the center going north and south and down this through across the center <laughs> going east and west so that you can find where it will actually sit when it's stitched out on your fabric and you'll know if it'll work right for your project or not and so i did that i printed it off at a hundred percent and it was a little bit too big for it'll fit but it's a little bit too big for the front of my crossbody bag because at the bottom of my bag down here, um, it has boxed corners, the bag does. So this is going to fold under a little bit on the front of the bag. And the top up here came awfully close to the zipper. And both of the sides came really close to the seams. So I reduced it. And the way I did that Anytime you want to do something with the design in Embrilliance, you have to select it. So I'll click on this and we'll select it. And now you can see that it, it has selected the whole design. And now I have some information up here where I have my width and height. And at 100%, it's 5 inches and 3 sixteenths square. So I want to take this down to 90%. So I'm going to click inside one of the, it will automatically reduce the entire design. So it wouldn't matter whether I clicked in uh, width or height. Um, I'll just reduce it. I'll just take this out and put 90% in there. And now I'm going to click down here and the whole design has reduced to 90% and it has adjusted the stitch count. And if it were a dense design, it would have adjusted the density. It's just all done with one click. So now if I wanted to, I could go over to file and I could save this as a working and as a stitch file. Um, but I already have it at 100% on my USB stick, and I know that my Bernina will also take care of stitch density and stitch count if I reduce anything. I don't reduce anything more than 20%. I don't increase anything more than 20% on my machine. 
So I know since I've only gone back to 90, and that's 10%, I know I can do it on my machine just as easy. So I'm not going to save this and clutter up my USB stick, um, but I did go ahead and print off. Um, I've got, let's see right here, it says right here I can print. So I did go ahead and print off the 90% reduced size and checked it on my pattern and it'll fit just fine and look great. So uh, now we're gonna go over to my machine and we will, um, I'll, I'll tell you what I hooped up and how I've centered my fabric and we'll go ahead and pull this up on the machine and I'll show you a couple tricks about um, how to reduce on the machine. So getting ready here, thought I would just go ahead and throw in to the video my hooping. Um, I'm using sticky back tearaway. So this is a kind of a rough surface here. It's a tearaway. And this is uh, the shiny side. And so we're gonna we're gonna get rid of this in the middle so it's real sticky. And remember when you hoop how we use our little um, this is the little screwdriver that is for your 97D quilting foot, quarter inch foot. Um, and it has this little hollow end and it's, it's kind of mushy. And you can put that on your hoops to use to, it's much easier to loosen and tighten them. And remember, always remember when you're hooping something up, every, it just seems like every hooping has its own sweet spot. So if you hoop it too tight, it pulls in on the top and the bottom and pushes the sides out. So you can't just start screwing it down and, and just go tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, you have to kind of look for that, what I call the sweet spot, where it sounds kind of like a drum and I always look at the back and make sure that the back is nice and flat and there's no warping or bubbling to it. And I always uh, burp the hoop. And burping the hoop is just a matter of pushing the inner hoop a little bit to the outside on the back. So now, um, I'm ready to take this paper off and what I usually do is I use a stylus. A lot of people use a pin, which works just great. I think you kind of get used to stuff. Um, so it's whatever you're comfortable with. And then I usually start at the top and I'll make a little squiggly line down through. And I, I always pull up. I don't pull, pull on uh, stabilizer down, even when I'm removing it. See, I got underneath there. So I'm just gonna lift it up so it makes it a little bit easier. And then when I get a hold down here, I'm going to pull up and not down. Even when I'm removing stabilizer, pulling up and not down makes a huge, huge difference. So I'm going to take off the other side, and uh, now I'm going to find the I'm going to find the center and the center, <laughs> and uh, I'll get my fabric on here, and we'll get over to the machine. I'm also going to float a piece of uh, medium weight tearaway behind. Um, I'm thinking this needs just a little more stabilizer. And since it's, you know, I can kind of feel it with my fingers, you'll get to where you can too. Um, but um, it's a bag, and so nobody's ever going to see the back of this um, central piece. It's, it's always going to be hidden completely inside the bag. And uh, so it doesn't matter to me uh, 
if I have a little bit extra stabilizer on the back. So we'll head over to the machine. I'll get this hooped and uh, get this in the hoop and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll I'm gonna show you how to reduce on the machine. So here we are at the machine. Um, I have the 770. Uh, some of you might have a different um, uh, series of seven or eight or whatever you've got. Um, and so I don't know how the other series uh, are on the touch screen, what the order of things is, but I'm sure that uh, just by following this, I think you can uh, journey through the icons on your screen and probably figure out how to do this. So the first thing I need to do is to get out of sewing mode because I've been in here sewing. So let's move over to embroidery. And it's going to, I've already got my um, feed dogs lowered and it pulled up the design for me right away. Um, over here, it's asking me, I've got a red exclamation mark, it's asking me a question. Um, and your machine will ask you a lot of questions. Um, so let's, let's see if we can answer this question. It wants me to put on 26 foot, so I have. Uh, so I'll, I will um, check out of that. And down here, it says I have my nine millimeter foot on, but I don't. I have my zero millimeter foot on for embroidery, so I'll tell the machine that I have switched. And we'll close out of that. So to begin with, um, here's how I get to my USB stick. And here's my design. And this is the 100% one. Remember, I told you um, I didn't bother to save it at 90% because I know I can do it here um, and it'll work just as easy and it won't clutter up my um, USB stick. So it's asking me to put it in the MIDI hoop. Well, I don't want to use MIDI. I want to use the oval hoop and um, I'm pretty sure that it's going to let me uh, as soon as I reduce this by 10%. So I'm going to go to the information. This little I means information. And this little arrow here, you can kind of see on this, the second icon down, it's going this way and going this way. And, uh, you know, it kind of looks like it wants to make something bigger or smaller. So let's, let's use it. Oh, sure enough, we can make something bigger or smaller. So now I'm going to use my top knob and I'm going to reduce this down to you I hope you can see that it's going down over here you can see it's going down and I am going to go down to 90 percent and there we are and I'm going to close out of it so now I've reduced it and it should be able to fit in my oval hoop so I'm going over here to my hoop selection and I'm going to go up and get my oval hoop and sure enough, it fits. So we're going to tell it that's okay. Now, right here, you can see that it says, I hope you can see this, 133 by 133 millimeters. So what if I want to know what that is in inches? I would go here to the tool, the gears. These little gears are gonna take me to quite a few menu, menu options. So we're gonna to go to the gears. And since I'm doing embroidery and I wanna know a size of something in embroidery, the hoop would be the logical thing to, to tick. And look, there's a tape measure. So it's uh, you know a matter of just using your uh, little hound dog skills and sniffing your way through and following the icons that look like they would be the most logical, or you can, of course, take the dealer classes. <laughs> but if you're on the group and your dealer's too far away, you're kind of stuck with me. So we're gonna we're gonna tick this um, little measuring tape, 
and see and look. I have millimeter highlighted and I, we want to know what it is in inches, so I'll highlight inches and I'll close out. And now I have 5.3 by 5.2 inches. And so I've, I've changed uh, my measurement in my machine. And I don't have to do that every time. I, it'll stay on inches until I uh, change it. So uh, now I've noticed on the group lately that there are quite a few of you who uh, can't figure out how to get to where you can actually see your needle go down into your fabric and start stitching a design. There are some steps to getting to that point, and one of them is to get your arm in position. And to do that, we're going to touch the needle icon, and it's Right now we've been kind of playing with it in the machine's computer. And now I'm going to actually send it to the, the machine. And this is what we are actually going to, to stitch out. So I'm gonna hit the needle. And you can see that it brought the arm over. And it's asking me to attach the hoop. Pinch and put down. Um, I say that a lot in my videos and um, that's what this little sign means and I already have my machine threaded up and I have my bobbin thread pulled up so I'm going to go ahead and attach my hoop and now it's happy and it's asking me to do a little calibration and I'm going to hit the green check mark and it'll move the hoop just a little bit just a little bit and now uh, I'm going to float. This is actually floated on here too, but it's stuck to the sticky back. So it's held pretty good. And I'm gonna try and get this um, piece of stabilizer under here without blocking the camera. But I'm just gonna put it under here. It's not in the hoop, it's just, it's just laying under there and when the hoop takes its, or when the machine takes its first few stitches, uh, it's, it'll stitch it to the back and it'll be there and move continuously with the rest of the hoop. So now I'm ready to start stitching and I'm not going to use a basting box with this. Um, I could. Um, in fact, maybe we will just so you can see how that works. Um, this is a basting box right here on your screen. Um, let me get your, my camera just a little bit closer. So we're gonna tick that. And now it's down in the lower corner there. And I am going to pull up my bobbin thread. And I always use tweezers. Please, please keep your fingers way back, far back, away from the needle and out of the stitching area. Today I saw a photo, and you see these all the time in the embroidery groups, but I saw a photo of a gal who had a needle, a sewing machine needle, through her finger. And at all costs, we want to avoid that. So now I'm going to press go and we're going to do a basting box. Oh, it doesn't like it that I didn't close the door. Um, when you refill a bobbin, and you put it back in your machine, it's really important to close the door. Listen, you'll hear mine close. And I will get out of this and we'll go ahead and finish our basting box. And there we go. So now we're ready to start our embroidery. It's going to go to the first stitch um, and I'll just go ahead and I'm not going to bother to pull my bobbin thread up because 
Um, nobody's ever going to see the back of this. So I'll go ahead and we will start this. Um, it's telling me that it's going to take 10 minutes and that it has 3,390 stitches. It won't take very long. there's a few tips and ideas for you for today. Uh, when this is finished, I'll go ahead and uh, finish constructing my bag. And um, if you have any questions about this video or how, how things work with your machine, of course, you can just ask any question you want. There'll always be somebody to get you an answer. So you have a good day. And uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to you, and enjoy sewing today.